When it comes to ADHD, we usually want to tend to try to find things, especially for our kids if they have ADHD, or for ourselves, for adults with ADHD, to try to find the great nutrients that is going to be important for us, for consuming on a daily basis. But there's so much information out there that could be confusing. It's like, oh, eat this, don't eat this, have this, you know, you should be consuming more of a diet like this. It can be really frustrating to be able to understand, okay, what is important for me to start consuming. Well, I'm going to try to break this down, simplify it of why certain nutrients should be important for you if you have ADHD. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Legrand and I have ADHD and dyslexia. Grew up with it and in this channel, we actually focus everything about ADHD. We cover topics when it comes to health as well as just uh, school strategies to implement. So everything ADHD you can think of, that is what this channel is all about. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I don't know why you haven't hit it already. Go ahead and hit it as well as if you like this video, give us a thumbs up as well as hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other future videos. So diving right in, let's talk about why it's important to have nutrients for the brain, especially for people who have ADHD. Because when it comes to nutrients, just like any other part of the body, our organs need certain nutrients. So the brain specifically also needs nutrients to be able to function properly. If it doesn't have those nutrients, guess what? It won't function properly. Just like when it comes to a car, they need fuel. Anything that needs to function, it needs that energy and nutrients. Now, diving a little deeper in the brain, there is actually what we call a myelin sheath that covers over the axons of our neurons that actually connect and make those communications for firing back and forth to communicate quickly. And that's very important where myelin sheath needs nutrients to be able to actually build and make sure that those uh, communication pathways are implemented with nutrients. Now, something that's really important when it comes to mental health, not just for ADHD, but for depression and anxiety, we actually really focus a lot on neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters such as dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, these types of neurotransmitters are very important for firing to help us focus, to be able to feel happy. These are things that tend to be low with people who have mental illness. And so when it comes to nutrients, they actually rely, neurotransmitters rely a lot on important nutrients. And we're going to dive into the specific nutrients that we should be focusing on. So the very first thing is talking about carbs and ADHD. Now, I know there's a lot of miscommunication out there as far as, you know, carbs are bad. Stay away from carbs, you know, start doing a keto diet. That's actually really important that you should start implementing that. Well, it depends on the quality of different types of carbs because there is different types of types of carbs that are important to implement more of. And then there's certain carbs that you should implement less of. So let's dive in that a little bit because carbs, our brain still relies off of carbs. Why? Because of the sugar, so glucose that gets broken down in our body, our brain does run off of glucose, just like lots of parts of our organs that rely off of that to function. But the big problem is, is when we consume what I call is high glycemic index foods. These are things that actually are very, where our body processes these types of carbs very quickly. And what happens is our pancreas actually produces insulin and it will produce it at a faster pace and get it through our body at a faster pace. So you hit these highs and lows. So we want more sustainable types of releasing you know, sugar as well as releasing different energy and nutrients at a very even pace. So when it comes to high glycemic index types of foods, these types of foods are things that look like that you should avoid is fruit juices because there's so much sugar compact in a fruit juice or cereals that and tend to be more of the sugar cereals as well as like chips. Uh, a lot of packaged foods tend to have a lot of simple carbs in them. These are considered high glycemic types of foods that you should be avoiding more of, especially if you have ADHD. These types of foods really hit those highs and lows and have a hard time for us to pay attention if we don't have more sustainable types of foods that are low types of glycemic index types of foods. So these foods look like whole foods, so a whole apple. Fruits that are actually still have the fiber in them, not something that has been juiced down. These are actually can be really helpful because it helps balance out those sugar levels. You don't hit those sugar spikes. The other things that can be really helpful is, you know, different types of whole grains. 
that don't have a lot of simple added stuff in it, as well as things that can be incorporated as legumes, as well as vegetables. These all have great amounts of fiber. So things that have a good amounts of fiber in them will help balance the sugar levels and keep those carb intake to help feed the brain and to be able to not hit those highs and lows where we will crash and have a hard time focusing and paying attention. The next thing is protein. So proteins are really crucial to try to get in, especially if you have ADHD. Why this is important, because if we look at protein and the amino acid breakdown, there's several different essential amino acids that you need to get that we only can get through actually our food. But the two important types of amino acids that are essential that are tryptophan and tyrosine, these types of two nutrients are actually which help influence neurotransmitters, help the process with actually breaking it down, helping produce more of dopamine, serotonin, those kind of things that are really important. So these types of nutrients, we can get more from our protein and why we need to implement it more into every single meal, especially breakfast. I find here, especially in America, our typical diet is more sugar based and not enough protein. So trying to get more protein, especially first thing in the morning can help us be more alert. They've seen in studies by implementing more protein, especially for kids with ADHD can help with attention, be able to focus, be more alert when you actually implement more proteins on each meal, especially for breakfast. The last important nutrient, and of course I'm talking about macronutrients. So we've already talked about carbs. We've already talked about proteins. The next essential macronutrient is fats. Now our brain is made up of 60% of fat. So guess what? It's definitely going to need some fat. The brain actually can rely on fat as fuel as well, but it needs to actually need essential types of fats, such as omega-3s. In our diet, we get a lot of omega-6s, but omega-3s are sometimes lacking. And sometimes they can find this with kids with ADHD or adults with ADHD that don't get enough omega-3s. And if there is a deficiency in this and they start implementing things like fish oil or just anything that has omega-3s can see improvement when it comes to alertness and paying attention. So things that can incorporate, you know, more omega-3s and healthy fats are going to be, like I mentioned before, fish oils, but you can incorporate salmon, tuna, you know, more of the colder types of fish, as well as walnuts, nut butters. These are types, and flaxseed, and flaxseed oil, and canola oil, these are kind of types of fats that you can incorporate more of to be able to help with the nutrients for your brain. So I hope you found that helpful and beneficial as far as what nutrients you should be implementing on a daily basis as far as what foods you should be focusing on. And if you are new to this channel, we are going to be actually talking about what vitamins and supplements you should be implementing in our next video. So if you don't want to miss out on that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button over here. You can also check out the video over here where I talk about foods to avoid and implement more of and this other ADHD video. So until next time, this is Dr. Legrand signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.